Welcome to Selling in the Motor Trade, in association with Automotive Management and Simcoe Training. This is the weekly podcast where we share best practice, tips, and ideas on how to sell more cars, improve your service department, and generally put more profit into your dealership or dealer group. I'm your host, Simon Bokert, or some of you might already know me as Skippy. And firstly, I want to say thank you for taking the time to tune in. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Selling in the Motor Trade. Today I'm joined by Darren Bedford. You may have heard a few weeks ago, we did a great podcast about upselling in the service department or after sales department if you're in the UK. And this is an episode that you might want to forward on to a service advisor working in your dealership, your dealer group, or in fact, OEMs, manufacturers. We've got more and more OEMs listening to this around the world. In fact, I should say thank you to all of our listeners. I mean, this podcast is going out to 15,500 people. It amazes this little thing that we started, Darren, uh, yeah. back in the lockdown has just grown and grown and grown. So uh, right. thank you to all the listeners. And again, this is one of those episodes that's going to be more of a training session. And it comes through because after Darren in the session, we had an email, one specific one that said, ah, can you remind me of all the reasons why a customer should service a car through us as opposed to the independent? And it was one of our clients, a uh, good friend that emailed us and said, hey, can you go through that list again that you did on our training course? So Darren, welcome back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to start off and ask you a question the same way as we got the email. Why should a customer service their car through a franchise dealership as opposed to an independent, a Kmart service or a, um, a Helford service or, or an independent service? Why should they? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and you're right. And, you know, I personally got some people sort of contact me and say, I remember that one. I remember thinking, you know, can permanently sort of thinking that we're expensive in the marketplace that we are. When we did that exercise, you, know, you walk that little bit taller about actually what you do in the business. So, um, but we are we we are expensive though, aren't we? Let's look at labour rates. Okay, if we got an hourly labour rate in a franchise dealership of well, where are we? If we're in the middle of Dublin, is it something like a hundred and fifty euros? If you're in Sydney, uh, what's it? Two hundred dollars, going more than that. Are we expensive to an independent? That's the question. Well, Hey, listen, there's there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet these days about saying there's always somebody who'll do it cheaper. OK, <laughs> so I don't think that that's different for any business in terms of, you know, are, are we uh, competitively priced? Um, if you ask me as far as that's concerned, I think we've had years where our customers just came to us mm -hmm. because we were a manufacturer. So we did the manufacturer service to keep the manufacturer servicing going, certainly in those early periods. Um, with very little competition, you know, even the quick fits back in those days weren't looking at our service work and all of that sort of stuff. They were just doing those tires, exhausts and bits and pieces. And progressively what's happened is people have entered the marketplace, want to eat at the same table as we're at. Now, yeah. what that's meant is we've done lots of lots of stuff with the customer's vehicle, the service, when they come through, lots of stuff that we do and we just take for granted every single day that we do it we're not the best at actually telling people what we're doing, yeah. okay, which leaves us a void of, well, I've paid this, but what's the value aspect of it? You know, give me, give me why it's more expensive and I'll happily pay it. Every one of your viewers will have been in that same situation over some product or service that they've looked at in the past. I understand that kitchen might be a bit more expensive, but, but tell me why. And if yeah. I understand why, I might find that extra money to go for that, that product. But if I don't understand why, and both those items are just kitchens, I'll probably choose on price, won't I? So the, the people listening to this, uh, doing a workout, going for a walk or a run or listen to this in the car on the way to work, Darren was just talking about the scales. In one hand, he had the, the value on one side, the product or the service we're talking about, or the amount of money. And I suppose that's one of the fundamentals we talk about all the time. We need to show people more value on what they get for that service. So why, yeah. why should they? Let, let's start off with some of the things. As I refresh for memory, for some of you people, you're going to know most of these, but also to reiterate to the people, your service advisors. 
Yeah, and it's funny, actually, when we do it on a course, although we do know most of them, you'll be surprised how long it takes to encourage some of these ones out. I yeah. mean, there's the early ones that are probably fairly on the top of our tongue when you say to them, OK, I'm a customer. Tell me why I should come and get my car serviced with you. We get things like collection and delivery. Yes. Yeah. Quite, quite early on. We get things like courtesy car. And obviously but, but, but can I just jump in there? That, that's not a little thing for me. Collection and delivery, courtesy car, is huge. I don't know if you've ever had to get one car delivered somewhere, get someone else to pick you up, you wait for it. If you, When COVID-19 times, okay, there weren't um, courtesy cars. And yeah. I can remember thinking, hold on, if I get my car serviced and crew, I'll go sit around and wait. I, I can't get Emma to come and pick me up. What do I do? Forget that. I'll get my car serviced in Chester because at least I can go and do other stuff because it's a retail park. It's it's not a little thing collection to It's a huge, uh, you, huge one from a customer's point You're of view. dead right. And I, and I think it's one that we definitely underestimate. And you only get that when you book your car in for a service and you make all of those arrangements to you. You know, maybe starting later, it may be, you know, I, I need to leave earlier at the end of the evening. It may be a colleague to take me or pick yep. me up or all those things. You're dead right. Um, you've obviously touched on courtesy, Carl. Sometimes we have them, sometimes we don't. But um, yeah, uh, again, that would be another item. The other one that's often on there is the car wash and vacuum. You know, every time yeah. that car comes into us, we wash the car for the customer and we vacuum. Again, sometimes that's been affected a little bit by COVID of late, but the, the aim will be to get back. Um, there's a big um, leasing company that actually survey their own users of cars and they rank car wash for a service right up there as one of the key drivers. Is it? Service. Well, absolutely, because they know that as an end user, are you really that worried that we've kept the manufacturer's service going? You're probably not. You just want to know that you've left it for an extra week to get a little bit dirtier than you would normally do. You want to know that when it comes out, it's going to be shining again. So, I've got to stop you there. Isn't that a good point? Um, I would not have thought about that, but we live and work in motor trades or in motor sorry dealerships all the time i get my car washed all the time in a car dealership normally yeah. someone say give me a key simon we need to get that washed for you there and it's something i wouldn't put right up there but i suppose it is it's a huge one isn't it absolutely absolutely yeah um the other one that, that often comes up particularly if i've got somebody from parts sitting on the course is we provide genuine parts yeah, yeah. okay um, they are manufactured parts for the specific vehicle that we're working with. With the warranty on it as well, though. The warranty on yeah. that particular car. Yeah, part. and the real, the real good thing about the warranty is that actually is across, you know, the whole, well, often pan-European, um, but certainly up and down the UK. So if you have the repair done at one of your franchise dealerships, uh, that will be covered if something goes wrong. And it's, it's unlikely, but, you know, it's like all of these things. If it does, you've got that peace of mind there behind yeah. it. We've got manufacturer trained technicians. Now this yeah. one forever gets kind of oh they're technicians they're you know they work on those cars. There is no getting away from the fact that somebody who specialises on something becomes quicker, yep. more effective, and more competent and more knowledgeable of that than somebody who tries to know a little bit about every single. I, I tell you where I hear this one come up all the time. <laughs> At, in the parts department where you get the parts department supply the independents yeah. and they get the phone call from the independent dealer saying hey john can you do me a favor go and speak to one of the master techs okay and ask them how do you uh, i don't know recharge the flux capacitor how many metachlorians should be running through it because yeah. they don't know it because they're looking at all the different cars Whereas that master tech, they know everything about that. And the amount of times the poor parts person stuck in the middle, they got their customer asking, yeah. can you speak to the tech how to do it? And the techs yeah. are like, no, just bring the car to us. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right. And, and it's that knowledge, isn't it? That, that That's built up over a time that just is irreplaceable, really. Yes, yeah. Um, also, the places that we're in, you know, the environments we take that for granted. These are gorgeous places to come and spend, yes. you know, 20 minutes, half an hour or the full time it takes for a service where you can get a nice, reasonable cup of coffee. You can get Wi-Fi connection. There's a toilet. You know, if you're out on the road, that in itself could be worth, you know, 20 or 30 quid to have a workstation that you would have to pay somewhere else to do. So, I you know, 
it, it's one. different for everybody, but it's a big one for certain people and, and finding out who those people are. Well, uh, no, I'm going to tell you, Quick Fit. Um, if you are based in the UK, we have, uh, you'll know who the Quick Fit tyre retailers are. Um, in other parts of the world there, it's just a, a, a chain, big chain. They've got a Quick Fit in most towns there, okay? And they do a good job of pretending they're cheaper than what we are. They aren't always. But I just want to remind anyone who's been to a Quick Fit themselves, Think about the coffee machine in the corner where you put that 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 little uh, clicks coffee or whatever it was. I can remember one that had a little blue holder yeah. for it and the, the, it was so hot it almost melted the plastic and you put it there and it's like, you can't drink this coffee. This is not Starbucks now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's what do you do with it. And it's like, ah, yeah, but I'm saving, what, $5 on the tire this is yeah. worth it it's little things isn't it uh, you're dead right i mean we underestimate it i mean i'm, I'm going to quite a few places that have almost got a full-on barista yeah style yeah. coffee machine now but um you've also we touched on warranties things like that 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 goes over all the work that we do but also over all the parts obviously that we do um i also talk about oil grades so oil grades yeah yeah, uh, yeah because Hey, listen, most of you, the, the, the people watching this in a franchise dealership will go, well, we only put fully synthetic oil into a car. Yeah, of course you do. Um, but there's a, still people out there that would class a service as a service. Um, they might put mineral oil there in to replace that uh, oil that's in the system with mineral oil, which is probably half the price, mm -hmm. you know, and a large component of the cost of a service. So, you know, if you're going to get out there and you're going to undercut somebody, you're not going to be getting the same level of um, products, the same yep. level of service for that lower price. Um, and, yeah. you know, I love looking at the internet or all these things where there's always somebody out there that will do it cheaper and all these yep. little slogans and plaques that, that, that are about. But it's true, you know, it, it, you need to get under the nub of what the actual issues are that are reducing the prices. I'll go stop you there. <clears throat> you know what uh, some of these independents are calling us? I, I heard this on a training course the other day. Mm. They, they, they call us now not main dealers, main stealers. <laughs> and I hadn't heard that before. There's like calling us main stealers. Look how much the labor rate is. But look at everything we do. We're not main stealers at all. No, and then hopefully at the end of this, it'll give you a good insight into you yeah. know, the proof behind that. The the other one that um, is fairly a, or a recent issued addition to it, but you know, every morning I wake up, my phone's got updates on it. Yeah. Um, it needs to have the optimum um, debugs or whatever to run the best possible system that it would be able to do that. And every time that car comes in, we as a franchise dealer are the only people that are capable of checking that it needs an update yep. and then completing that update, obviously, if it needs doing as well. And so it's something that people are very, very much used to yep. with all electronic equipment that's being used. And as I say, it's something that we undertake and, and you know, very rarely does it actually focus as a, as a positive rather than perhaps a kind of, oh, yeah, we've just yeah, we've done the software. You know, we should be drilling this home a lot harder. Yeah, that software um, update as well. It's an update, not recall. Because recall, no, people yeah. in their mind, they're like, oh, safety, what's wrong with my car? And it's worth pointing out at that stage, everybody has a duty of care, whether you're a yeah. franchise dealership or you're, um, you know, a, a, an independent, that if the car is due a recall, they should be notifying the customer yes. of recalls. So there is a clear distinction. This yes. is just optimum running. But... But it is things like, for instance, better fuel economy on the vehicle. So, you know, the, the setup of that car may be improved by having the latest software updates on it. So it is worth speaking about. Um, the other thing that, that comes in, you know, and, and main stealers, I haven't heard that one, yeah. but, but, but I can understand why, because everybody's jockeying for their position within that marketplace and they want to create that more expensive bit like the supermarkets do with each other. You know, they're all around the same price, but they all want to make the other one look more expensive and theirs look better value. Um, but the book times for me is a, you know, is a classic. Mm. Irrespective, if we've got somebody who's learning and who's working on that car, it's going to take them longer in most operations than the book time to do that repair. Yep. But we will charge the customer the book time for that repair because that's how it works. So yep. we might have that higher labor rate, 150 euros that we were talking about potentially earlier, but it might take us an hour to do that repair. If somebody charges a lot less, 90 euros an hour, but it takes them two hours to do that repair, 
it actually isn't cost effective. You know, you've had the person who's least experienced out of it working on the vehicle, but you've also paid more money for that particular repair. So there's always other elements to it, isn't there? Yep. The other one that sometimes comes up, and it won't be the same for everybody, but service activated recovery. You know, sometimes yeah. by having the service, they'll extend your um, roadside assistance for a yep. further 12 months, which again is, you know, quite a value to be honest. Or with what it. Toyota Lexus are doing uh, in the UK. You know, you get your car serviced, you're increasing your warranty by another 12 months. Um, I mean, it's a great retention tool for that yeah. brand. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, the other thing is our walls. Are covered our cupboards are covered okay with what they call specialist tools for all yeah. these different vehicles but yeah. they're specialists to us they're not specialists as in they work on every single vehicle that's out there in production they are your manufacturer's specialist tools to either improve that time that it takes to do the job or to ensure that the car's not damaged as a result of not doing it properly yeah. and you know we'll all have been in that situation where perhaps we've been phoned and asked could i borrow your specialist tools? <laughs> Um, yep. ideally beforehand but often we'll see the car you know post somebody having a go at it and then going mm, it didn't really work now i need the specialist tool because i've damaged this or whatever so yeah 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 they're really relevant but it's also investment and equipment that we put money into and the final one i'm going to come on to um and it's at the end for a reason really is the stamp in the book you know whether yeah. that be electronic whether it be the stamp whether it be the, the invoice that they, that goes forward with the car, it makes no difference, is that this vehicle has been serviced in accordance to the manufacturer's schedule. So that's what we do on a, we, on a course. That, that isn't an exhaustive list. Uh, other people may come up with other bits and pieces for definite. But then what I tend to do with that is just go back through that and say, OK, so if we do a service on a, a leading vehicle, how much would that cost me for a, a leading car? What do you reckon, Simon? Okay, a leading car there. Um, sorry, say, ask the question again. So it would be um, one of the leading, you know, your, your sort of entry level car. If you're doing a first service on that car, I, I normally get figures. The reason I always 250. Throw it out to me, yeah. I, I, we're 250, something like that. In I was going to say, I always get figures around that, but I always also let them tell me because if yeah. I tell you how much it is and you go, well, it's not, I can get it done at this price. Yeah. So, Again, as, as listeners, depends the areas that you are, just take whatever price you charge. Yep. Then look at what a competitor in the area would charge. Okay. Um, so that's somebody who may be like a quick fit, for example, who now do servicing. So they might charge you. And again, typically I'd find them potentially 80 quid or so less in yep. price yep. for a service, usually something around that. But again, do it in your own area. Have a look at what the, the differential is there. And then what I do is just go back through the list and say, OK, if that customer came in, what value would we put on those items? Now, we might get some comments here about, well, I don't know why you valued it at that. I see it as a lot more. The problem with this is, OK, as we've already highlighted, you know, specialist tool is priceless if yes. you need it. Yes. But if you don't need it, it doesn't necessarily have much of a value to that person where it hasn't yeah. been used. So what we tend to do is err on the side of caution and we'll just use some figures that kind of hopefully fit with most people's thought processes on this but if we said collection and delivery or courtesy car or one of those services it's a tough one isn't it is that is that 25 euros something like 20 euros am i being over the top there i think you're being right i normally just say let's go 10 pounds let's yeah. say because not every customer avails themselves of it you know if yep. you borrow a car for the day i reckon it's probably about 35 pounds worth of value that you've had yeah. But not everybody borrows cars. So let's just say that service, that ability is £10 worth. Okay. Washing the car? What do you reckon on washing the car? Well, I know I get a car washed. They'll be, um, if they hoover it as well. Again, it's a tenner, isn't it? Ten yeah, pounds? It, I think so. It's got to be of anybody's money. The, the other one I'm going to just divert from our industry here for genuine parts. And what I'd say to you is if I drop my phone, and it smashed on the floor and I needed a new screen. I've got a couple of choices here. Uh, you got your iPhone. I know that. Yeah, so I've got an iPhone. It's going to be quid. Back. Yeah, yeah. So I have a couple of choices here, though. I can go to the train station and I can get the guy there to do the job for me. OK. Yeah. Now, I probably know it's not going to be a genuine Apple part that he's fitting on it. And I certainly know he probably didn't ply his trade within Apple when he originally did the, you know, when he originally learned how to do it. 
But if I knew that I was going to get the right uh, part or the, you know, the, the, the parts yeah. that were designed for that, and it was only going to cost me £15 extra, okay, I'd pay that. Yeah. I think if it's £200 and I can get it done for 60 then there's a bit of a different maybe yes. conversation. But let's just say it's 15 quid's worth of, to know that it's genuine manufacturer approved parts. And remember here, one of the things that are about parts that are often fitted after market parts is just that it's that it's able to cut across two, three, four, five, ten different versions, maybe even various manufacturers. So the fit is always, it always works, but it's always probably a little bit looser than the genuine parts might be and those sorts of things. So to know that I've got genuine parts, I think it's worth 15 pounds well, of anybody's money. But. It, it is. And just to add to that story, I, I don't know how true this is, but I think Apple now are selling genuine parts to non-Apple repairers because okay. of that issue, because they yeah. know they're just putting on a, a, a separate screen and it was like a, a 50 or something like that and it was 200. So again, yeah. listeners will tell me if I've got that wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Apple. It may have been Samsung, but they're starting to sell the genuine stuff to other suppliers. I, I believe Absolutely. Maybe even if I've got this right, maybe the law's making them do it or something like that. I uh, I think I heard somewhere. And, and then the other thing I would say is if I had that same scenario, what would I pay to have the man from Apple fit those parts for yeah. me as opposed to the man? And again, it comes down to the amount of savings. But I think to know that the guy who was working on my vehicle had a specialization on that vehicle a knowledge and an understanding, the ability of likely to spot things that weren't quite right on it. I'd pay £20 for a technician that was trained and specifically, you know, I'd, it, like, take it to the Apple store. If it was 20 quid extra, I'd pay that all day long. I'd pay that all day long if I knew that the man in the train station didn't have to phone the part supplier <laughs> at, at Apple and say, oh, by the way, how do I fit this again? How do I do Can it? you ask one of the techs how they do it? So, yeah, you would put value on that. And so then there's another thing we talked about the facilities. Now I'm yeah. not gonna again it, for me, I'm out on the road quite often. If yeah. I can find somewhere where I can comfortably sit, do work while my car's being serviced, have Wi-Fi to continue that, have a cup of coffee, I'd pay 20 pounds for the environment that we've got. But let's just say it's a fiver. It's yeah. a fiver's worth of value. Because that doesn't matter whether you just have a coffee or whether you sit there or whatever. Let's say it's a fiver's worth of value. Um, there's a few things there. The warranty is always difficult to price because to yeah. some people it's worth an awful lot to have that peace of mind. But to other people, it doesn't really give them a lot until such time as they call upon it. Yeah. So, you know, some of this stuff I don't even put a value next to. And that would be the same with that. It would be the same with the oil grade. You know, if somebody's fully synthetic versus fully synthetic, there's no, no improvement yeah. or saving there. But just be mindful of the fact that there will be on those real lower prices somebody using mineral yep. oils and things like that the other thing that we talked about was software updates yeah now again if i knew once a year my car will be running the latest software possibly improving the way it drove the fuel economies those sorts of things then i would certainly again pay 20 pounds to update that and just make sure i'm running the latest software for that peace of mind there so again it might change for you but my perceived value around that would be reasonably high yeah um don't know how you feel about that, Simon, but yeah, it, I, it's a big one for me. Yeah, it is a big one. It's become a way of life. Everything that we have has to have a debug, an update, a fix, or whatever, and, and it just to run at that op optimum. Well, we power. just have a look at the technology on any modern car compared to yeah. a phone. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head for me when you say, how often do we get the update from yeah. Apple? But the, the technology on any modern car with active lane departure warning systems and the, how many, we've, we've all learned this recently. Who was shocked how many semiconductors are in a car? How many semiconductors are in an electric vehicle nowadays? Do you remember being shocked how many there were? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's, the the technology that exists in there i mean some of the cars now virtually have an ipad sat on the screen anyway so you know you're, you're kind of talking about an awful lot of investment in that sort of uh, equipment that needs Excuse updating me. and regularly looking after then we get on to a few that i think were, were difficult to quantify again don't get me wrong i'm not belittling these i'm just saying it's very hard to give a value to a customer things like the book times there yep. the service activated recovery the, the specialist tools, most of that stuff 
you know, if you used any of that stuff, it's worth a phenomenal amount. But if you're not using it, it might be difficult. Well, well you, you say that, but just the service acted recovery. If we're going to buy AA or uh, RACQ back home in Australia, okay? Yeah. Uh, easily, is that going to be what? £140 sterling in the UK yeah. for 12 months roadside assistance. Um, there's a direct value there, directly. Yeah. There is, there is. And, and look, you're, when you do this exercise and do it with your teams or when you circulate it, you'll all come up with different figures. But I assure you, that gap's now narrowed between, yeah. you know, I'm using stuff there that your guy down the road wouldn't necessarily offer or wouldn't necessarily have. Things like the Wi-Fi and, the, you know, the nice lounge to sit in, the courtesy cars, the clean of the car. That's all tangible things. They're unable to do the service software updates. So, you know, we're actually pricing ourselves at a price that is probably underpricing where we should be yeah. because we're offering all these extra benefits, but we just need to make our customers aware of it, going back to those scales you talked about. So I'm yep. there and just balance those scales in the favor of, well, why wouldn't I go there? But that is before the last point that I wanted to come on to at the end of this, which is the stamp in the book. Yeah. Okay? Because I, I'm not expecting you to get into these conversations with your customer, but I just want to ask a couple of questions. If you had a car that had had two services and you had two of these cars identical on your used car forecourt available for sale, one had a full manufacturer's service history on it and the other vehicle had Apache service or had one service from somebody else, what would your used car manager have valued the difference between those two vehicles at? Wow. And, and again, it changes for everybody. But forget that because that's industry jargon. Imagine now you're buying that car for your daughter to learn to drive or for your you know, elderly mother or whatever you're buying that, egg, that car for. If both those cars were sitting staring at you at the forecourt, same mileage, one owner from you, same car, one had a full service history and one didn't, what premium would you now pay to take the one that had the full manufacturer service? And you know what? Often... OK, we can actually refer to that as it almost being self-funded. Yeah. Because the difference that it would cost would probably be the amount of money that you paid by getting that manufacturer's service. Yeah. It genuinely enhances the value of it. And, then, and it doesn't stop there. If you go and buy a car that's 20 years old that looks immaculate and it has every stamp in the book, you're going to pay a lot more for that car than you are one that had the first three done in a manufacturer's uh, 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 environment and then since then has a sporadic history to back it up so it never goes away the value is enhanced by having that manufacturer's stamp or approved parts and all those things that, that, that go it, into it's so true on the up. on the after sales side of it sometimes um we don't see what the other side of the business does and uh, the service managers advisors listening to this okay every single time a customer rings a car into trade-in or a part exchange very quickly, it says on the appraisal form, be it an iPad or whatever system, has it got a full service history? Is it manufacturer's service history? That's the next question. Yeah, it yeah. is there. And we ask that right at the beginning when we're valuing a car there. Um, because that's, and hey, listen, it's asked because that's what customers want. And just a point on that, you know, uh, again, sometimes we might not be perhaps as strict in, uh, internally and all the rest of it. But if you sell your car to one of those online marketplaces, those questions that you've just asked will be there. And if you can't provide the documentary evidence that it's got those services, i.e. copies of the invoices or whatever, the value will be dramatically yeah. affected on those sites. Yeah, so, yes. you know, it, it, it's one of those. And um, it is worth every now and then just stopping and sort of fluffing your feathers a little bit and going, do you know what? We do offer a great value for, value for money for service. We've just got to talk more people through it so that that set of scales there flicks nice and easily to the, the, the point that this is money well invested. This isn't a cost. Cool. Well, listen, people listen to the podcast, please forward this on to service advisors. Uh, alternatively, hey, listen, we've got the sales fitness program, Today's Service Advisor, where Darren talks about this stuff and a whole lot more things and proving the whole after sales department. Uh, shameless plug again, but uh, hey, listen, we're a sales training company. You guys would uh, be upset if we didn't do that. You wouldn't want a sales training company listening to a podcast on how to sell in the motor trade if uh, we didn't talk about selling ourselves. So hey, listen, get in contact with Darren. How do people get in contact with Darren if they want more information on that? 
it, dead simple, darren.bedford at simcotraining.co.uk, um, darren double R, uh, or contact me at LinkedIn. Great. Listen, thank you again for your time. Really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you, Simon. That just leaves me to say that all details of this episode and other episodes on the selling in the motor trade can be found on our website, simcotraining.co.uk. Go there to get a copy of our book, Words That Sell Cars. Go there to sign up to a free trial of our sales fitness online sales training program. Easiest way to get hold of me is Simon Bokert through LinkedIn.